Hi there, thanks for joining me. In this video, we're going to be talking very briefly about what you need to look for when you're wanting to decide on your NOC code, your National Occupational Classification Code for your Express Entry Profile Setup. This is a crucial part of any Express Entry application and we'll talk about it in detail after the break. As always, remember to like our videos so that others will see more videos like these. Uh, subscribe to our channel so that you'll be notified when next we publish videos. Uh, share our videos with, with anybody you think will need it. And lastly, check us out on our website at go.gooselaw.com. I'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. My name is Donovan Francis. I'm a Canadian immigration lawyer and I help uh, workers, students, businesses and families with their Canadian immigration matters and save them from having to deal with all of the complicated immigration rules. Now, one of the challenges that many persons encounter when they're wanting to apply for Canadian permanent residency under um, one of the express entry programs is that they must indicate what their um, national occupational classification code is, uh, their NOC code, what the NOC code is that they would have um, worked uh, in while, while, while they, they were gaining their work experience. Now, the National Occupational Classification Code is Canada's way of identifying the different types of jobs that exist. So every job that exists in Canada has an assigned code, a code that's been assigned by the government, known as a National Occupational Classification Code. And when you are submitting your express entry application for permanent residency, one of the requirements is that you must have worked in one of the, um, the, the, the prescribed NOC categories, right? National Ac Occupational Classification Code uh, categories. So you must have worked in a category zero or O, which is for managers, or a category A, which is for professionals, or a category B, which is also for, for some professionals and, and, and primarily for high-skilled workers. So you, the job you've, you would have done must have fallen into one of those three broad categories. Now contained in each category are many, many uh, NOC codes. You know, so you may have under the, the, the NOC A category, for instance, all types of IT related roles, each of those roles having a NOC code, or you might have uh, all types of healthcare worker uh, roles, each of those role having their own individual NOC code and so on and so forth, right? So we're talking about hundreds of NOC codes. Now, the way you determine what your NOC code is, and this is crucial because if you have indicated the wrong NOC code or if you've misunderstood uh, the type of experience that you actually had, and you ended up uh, inputting the wrong NOC code, then that could ultimately lead to a refusal if at the end of the day, your, your work experience does not uh, qualify you to apply under express entry. So that's going to be crucial. And so when you are assessing your NOC code, the crucial thing that you're going to be looking at is the duties, are the duties rather, that you performed while you were in the particular role. A lot of people get hung up on the job title, you know, so if they were um, a developer, you know, or um, a web architect, then they get focused on the, the job title of a web ar architect and in the process they neglect the actual duties that they performed. Now that can be a, a, a fatal mistake as far as um, permanent residency applications go. And so what you will want to be focusing on instead are the actual duties that you performed. And uh, uh, the Government of Canada has a website that outlines all of the different NOC codes and all of the job duties that are to be performed uh, or at least that, are expect that it, the government expects that you would have performed if you were in that particular role on that website, it has a lead statement which spells out uh, some of the, the, the broad expectations of persons working in each of the different NOC uh, codes. And then it has a bulleted list of duties that it expects that you'd have done at least the majority of. Okay, And there's no expectation that you must have done every performed rather every single duty 
listed in the NOC code. No, but you must have completed at least a majority of the essential duties, those duties that are essential to the, the actual role. And you must also have carried out uh, the functions which would have been indicated in the lead statement, right? of the, the, the particular NOC code. Now this, again, I cannot um, overstate it. This is crucial for express entry applications. And so if you are wanting to uh, be sure about your, your, your NOC code, you will want to focus less on the job title and more on the duties, okay? And then another challenge is that oftentimes the, you may come across roles that are similar you know, but they're not the same. And, and sometimes there are very nuanced distinctions between the roles that are not immediately obvious to you. And you will want to pay particular attention uh, to those to make sure that, that you've gotten it right. And so that is something that we provide uh, guidance with uh, to those of our clients who are wanting to apply for Canadian Permanent Residency under the uh, Express Entry um, programs and who require an assessment and evaluation of their uh, correct NOC code. That's something we're happy to help you with. Okay, I trust you found this uh, quick video useful. As always, remember to like our video so others may see more videos like this. Um, subscribe to our channel so that you will be notified the next time we publish a video. And um, share this video with friends and family and whoever else you think may need it. And check us out on our website at go.gooselaw.com. Thank you, see you again.